Thank you so much for clicking on this video. My name is Solomon SK for Coffee and RPGs, where I cover the latest news, trends, and updates for the MMO and RPG gaming genre. With that being said, if you guys got your coffee or beverage of choice ready, let's go over them together. Cheers to you guys. So first up, we will go ahead and cover some of the news that uh, I gathered from MMOculture.com. First one being a game called Rise. Former Netmarble staff reveals the Unreal Engine multi-platform MMORPG. And for all the MMORPG fans out there, you guys know that MMOs aren't as popular as they once were, especially in the beginning of World of Warcraft days. So it's always a good thing when we hear different and new stories about this genre. So for a quick backstory before we begin, it says uh, back in 2015, Netmarble launched a mobile MMORPG called Raven Worldwide, developed by an internal team called ST Play. One of Raven's Sky development staff, Yuzha Ho, has went on and found his own studio in 2015 called NXN, which stands for Neo Developer Experience, Neo User Emotion. Not, I mean, <laughs> I mean, I guess it's better than saying your studio is called uh, N D E N U E or something like that. I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> Anyways, it does go on to read that. While we are not sure of the story yet, there are some confirmed details. Rise is crafted using the Unreal Engine, but no version mentioned. It also supports multiple platforms, such as the PC consoles and mobile devices. And this is a trend that we've actually been seeing on the increase as of late, especially with games such as Genshin Impact and V4 and um, Project Valhalla, I believe it's called. So I'm really glad that a lot of these games are going that route instead of just solely just being on the mobile device or mobile platform. It is unknown if cross-platform gameplay is supported. Rise is described as a story-oriented MMORPG based on medieval fantasy, and there are lofty goals for the game to enter esports as well. Gameplay-wise, players will form a party of five members with RTS strategic elements, along with promises of large-scale battles. I will admit that kind of turns me off just a little bit. I used to play RTSs a lot, especially back in the days of Age of Empires 2, but they're not really my cup of tea. These these days but that doesn't mean this game can't be good in any way like i said before mmorpgs are not as popular as they once were so i feel like beggars can't really be choosers at this point lastly it says that yuz hoko the ceo of nxn said quote we are developing the game with the main goal of leaving emotions that can be remembered by all users all over the world through realistic stories and feelings of play and we will continue to release rise development contents to communicate with users in the future end quote and if this is the case i'm i'm all for it i love story driven games and if the developers can deliver then i am definitely going to give it a shot but uh we all know that a lot of devs out there tend to over developer especially if your name is todd howard but uh, that's uh, another story all right so i'll cover this just because it is an rpg and uh, there's a number of you who are uh, self-proclaimed weebs out there <laughs> but anyways it goes on to say that blue archive anime waifu mobile rpg from nexon gets a new name which is again blue archive it used to be called project mx and this is a mobile rpg developed by korean studio nat games the subsidiary of nexon korea which previously made titles such as hit overhit and v4 and lastly from mmoculture.com the american studio of nexon that was located in Orange County, was working on a few titles and they're all canceled because the studio itself has gone under, unfortunately, which really sucks because there's a lot of people that the company employed and now they have to look for other jobs, which probably isn't really easy considering we're still having that global uh, sickness that I really can't mention right now. So we got one article from Gematsu that I really wanted to cover. And if you let me indulge just a little bit, if you guys have been watching this channel for a while, you guys know that I'm a huge mech fan and I'll even cover mech games even though they're not MMOs or RPGs. But in this case, this is an RPG. So it goes on to read that mech strategy RPG Dual Gear launches in early access for the PC on July 29th, PS4, Xbox One, and Switch in 2021. And... Obviously, I got very excited when I read that title, but as stated before, Mech Strategy RPG Dual Gear will launch on Early Access for PC via Steam on July 29th, 
followed by the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Switch in 2021. Dual Gear is a combination between 3D mech action shooting and turn-based strategy inspired by various classical Japanese mech games with brand new features that go beyond the traditional retro mech games. I actually have no idea how they're implementing those two different gameplay mechanics together. I'm super interested in how that's going to play out. Dual Gear engages the player to pilot their mechs with real-time action shooting while experiencing in high pressure of tactical turn-based layers. And as you can see, I have the trailer playing above me or over me, depending on how I edit this. And you'll see that the mechs are very Japanese inspired. You'll definitely see a lot of armored core, it seems like, in a lot of these mechs, but that's not a bad thing at all. And the last key point here, story driven with unique characters like an RPG, gain more EXP and WXP from the story mode to unlock new skills and more levels. The first act will be available at the launch of Steam Early Access version Version, and more will come through the early access updates. So as you can see here, I will have a link to their Steam page down in the pinned comment section below. And from what I could tell, it looks like the demo is actually free to download. It doesn't have a price tag, but rather just a download button. So I'll definitely be checking this out. I'll probably even make a dedicated video just solely on this game, just to see what it's like as a first impression video. Next, we'll go ahead and cover some of the articles from MassiveTheOP.com. Do you guys remember Temtem? This is supposed to be sort of the open world MMORPG uh, that's very Pokemon-like, right? But it's back in the news. Temtem adds in Kisiwa Island tomorrow. The update brings clubs and robust chat systems as well into the game, allowing you to chat with your friends and form persistent social groups. Once the patch drops tomorrow, players will also gain new skills for traversing landscapes, access new emotes, and key mapping changes. You can also get yourself some new monsters to sign in on with your team, since the new region is reportedly adding 23 new critters to fill out your roster. Next, No Man's Sky touts an uptick in player numbers thanks to crossplay and Xbox Game Pass release. And it goes on to read Hello Games. Sean Murray has shared a blog on Xbox Wire that announces that No Man's Sky has enjoyed a fresh uptick in player interest with over a million new players arriving to the game since it released to Windows 10 and the Xbox Game Pass. Next, we'll go ahead and cover some of the articles from MMORPG.com. First one, Project Gordon's beta concludes, new update outlined. And this article actually doesn't have really anything interesting to say, but the reason why I wanted to cover it is because I've actually never heard of this game before. And if we go ahead and head on over to their title page, it is considered a MMORPG, but is developed by a independent studio. It will have PVP, and the engine they're using is the Unity 3D, and it has a sandbox style of gameplay. But it's really interesting that the release date was supposed to be back in 2016, so they really haven't uh, updated that, unfortunately. But looking at the trailer above, it does look a little crude and a little outdated, admittedly. But then again, this is being developed by an independent team. I wouldn't be surprised if it was just one or two people making this game from the looks of things, but I'll definitely keep you guys posted as we get more information about this game if you're into that sort of stuff. And in their next article, this is a series of updates regarding the instability of some of the Lord of the Rings Online and Dungeons and Dragons Online servers. Apparently this has been going on for the past five days, but unfortunately, as of recording of this video, there are two servers from Lord of the Rings Online that are still down, which are Arkenstone and Evernight. And in their next article, really quick, I just wanted to let you know that Ubisoft shares Assassin's Creed Valhalla AVR character trailer. And that's it. That's just pretty much what I wanted to let you know. If you guys must gobble up everything that is Assassin's Creed Valhalla, I'll have the links to these down in the pinned comment section below. Lastly, from MMORPG.com, Blade and Souls Dark Passage update arrives July 22nd. And it goes on to read that first up is the Coldrack Fever event starting from July 22nd and running through August 19th, as well as the Summer of Splendor event, which also runs from July 22nd through August 19th. This event is all about the rewards from this event to find the magical lamps such as antique lamps. Next, we will go ahead and cover some of the articles from Destructoid.com. 
First one here, you can tour CD Projekt Red's offices on Google Maps, including their bomb pizza kitchen. And admittedly, I actually had a lot of fun uh, going through their offices. Granted, they don't give you access to all parts of the facility, but you're able to see uh, different booths, their conference rooms and all that stuff. And it looks like we got a little dining area here with this huge projection screen right there. And uh, it's a very clean studio. Like I wouldn't really mind at all to be able to work with them especially in a place like this because uh yeah it was i had a lot of fun with this so again i'll have the links to these down in the pinned comment section below if you're interested and in their next article this is for all the jrpg fans out there check out the gorgeous chris tales demo on pc and consoles modus games has dropped a demo for its beautiful time hopping adventure chris tales previously released on pc the demo offers a glimpse at the story-driven campaign as well as a battle-hardened Colosseum mode where players fend off waves of enemies and bosses. And lastly from Destructoid.com, both Shin Megami Tensei 3 Remaster and Shin Megami Tensei 5 are coming to Nintendo Switch in 2021. Revealed on the Nintendo Direct Mini Partner Showcase, Atlas had a few announcements for fans this morning. For one, Shin Megami Tensei 3 Nocturne, arguably the best SMT game up to date, is getting a HD remaster set to debut on the Switch in spring of 2021. And lastly, in other SMT news, we finally got another glimpse at Shin Megami Tensei 5, the first game in the main series since Tensei 4 in 2013. Through a brief a trailer, we learned that it's tentatively set for 2021 and it will have a simultaneous worldwide release. Next, we head on over to allchar.com for one article. You won't have to finish the main story to complete Cyberpunk 2077. And I know that sounds kind of like a contradiction in some ways, but uh, it's pretty interesting. It goes on to read that Cyberpunk 2077's main story may be shorter than The Witcher 3, but that does not mean that it will lack quality content. Powell Sasko, and I do apologize if I'm mispronouncing that, Cyberpunk's 2077 lead quest designer on the game, mentioned how CD Projekt Red wants to avoid the issue of a stretched out story with Cyberpunk 2077, so that's why they have a shorter main story but more subplots that can influence the main storyline in various ways. These subplots can change the main plot of the game in such a way that players may not even finish the main story but still finish the game. Judging by this, it is possible that some side quests may even lead to a complete change of location or the death of an important character that has a part to play in the main story. Next, we will head on over to PC Gamer for a couple of articles. And really quick, the first one here, see if these hits 15 million players, 1 million of them on Steam. And I'm really glad that the studio was able to find a resurgence of players considering when it first came out, it kind of came out with uh, lackluster reviews and reception, unfortunately. But uh, for games to pick things up and another game like this would probably be No Man's Sky or even Final Fantasy XIV. Definitely stories like this is awesome to hear. And lastly, Minecraft players may have found the world of the title screen. Arguably one of the more popular or iconic uh, title screens in gaming history. But it does go on to read that the project started last month on the 14th of June and utilized a distributed computing project called Minecraft at Home, which uses volunteers idle computer time to quote advance Minecraft related research end quote. The same project is also looking for the tallest cactus on Minecraft. Some of the things that people do on their free time. <laughs> they have recently found one that is 22 blocks high. You can read more on Reddit. And that concludes today's episode of MMO and RPG News Roundup. I do appreciate it if you made it with me so far because the watch time does help with the algorithms. So earlier this month, I made it a goal of mine to try to get 200 subscribers by the end of July. And I finally hit that goal with a week left. So thank you to those who have subscribed, commented, and shared, and retweeted all that. I really do appreciate it. It means a lot to me. So thank you so much. It's progress like this, little achievements like this, that uh, allows me to be able to continue and go forth and provide content for you guys, which I really do enjoy doing. But in any event, I will finally let you guys go. I hope you guys have a blessed night and I will see you guys next time. Cheers again, everyone.